Hello everybody and a warm welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well. Ooh, where are we? We are in Lisbon where we landed in the 777. We got services coming up. Never noticed this before at, at here. This is a default airport. This is uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, Humberto Delgado Airport. It's a default airport. Um, I never noticed it having animated like radars and, and such like that, like rotating domes and that. Good. Ah, welcome aboard, Roro Air Maroc. Uh, what, which flight are we doing uh, today? Uh, I guess you can tell where we're going. Uh, we are in Royal Air Maroc. Flight 147, non-stop from Lisbon down to... I don't know why, I just have this obsession for some reason with Morocco and the airport Casablanca. It's a default airport. I don't know why, I just love... It's my fav one of my favorite places to fly to. Uh, on the African continent is Morocco. Probably because it's, you know, it's by the sea. Uh, you know, it's a historic uh, city. Uh, historic country. Uh, so there we're going. Uh, this is uh, a livery originally made for the Zebo mod. We are in the Zebo mod, by the way. This is the brand new version just came out. About 24 hours ago, this is 4.0.21. Just to get the, the homework, uh, housework out of the way. Links to everything I'm using will be in the description down below, including where you can get the livery, get the Zebo mod. We are using Auto Ortho. We are using Ground Handling Deluxe. We're using X Enviro. We're using Auto Ortho. Sim Heaven. Um, all of that will be down below. We're using default airports. I don't think this airport looks bad. No, we're parked down here on the south ramp uh, kind of area uh, because our runway's right there. I, I just wanted to go there. And uh, it, it lets me use all this kind of stuff, which I like. So I'm going to finish loading us up. And uh, I've got our flight plan already downloaded in that. I will show you how to do some of this stuff. Um, another thing I did was I uh, overlaid my flight route onto the Avi tab. I will show you how to do that as well. And uh, one thing I can show you right now, this is how you get this aircraft to start doing stuff now. Uh, if you haven't read the handbook or updated your Zebo in a while, by the way, you can check your version right there. Uh, you're going to need to do it. So we will load the official flight plan. There we go. We will activate it. And now a whole bunch of stuff will start happening. Airside services. I'd, uh, fuel guys are going to come over and all that kind of stuff. And that's just going to get going all on its little lonesome. At least it should. <laughs> now watch it make me out to be a liar. No, there he goes. Now I noticed the icons. Uh, uh, make, oh no, it says it's fueling because it's red. So there you go, you can, uh, refueling, cleaning and catering is loading, you can watch the fuel. There are some specifics, like these lights up here have to be in a specific position. Or that will not activate automatically for you, so. Uh, well, it will, you'll still be able to push activate, but it won't do anything, and it will tell you. You know. Passenger lights need to be in auto and nav lights must be on steady. Okay, down here. So, I'm going to finish loading us up. I will bring you back when we are pushing back. And that uh, better pushback is in use, of course. Uh, let us get a METAR. Uh, the weather's going to be perfect. I can tell you that much right now. Mm -hmm. Tree. 
search. 1021. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, we may as well do them all right now. 102 month. There we go. So, I'll bring you back, folks. Uh, glad to have you on board. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ring notification bell. You get notified. Like I said, everything I'm using, link down below. Link to my Discord down below. It's not behind a paywall. Anybody can join it. And, of course, if you'd like to help support the channel as we are agenda-free, we do not do sponsored content on the channel. Uh, you will find a link. Uh, to PayPal down there, if you'd like to make a one-time donation, all money's uh, donated. Uh, go back into the channel, hence we were able to pick up the uh, 777 when we got the opportunity to get into the Alpha from Flight Factor. Uh, that was all thanks to viewer donations and a little bit of my own money as well. And that, ah, uh, glad to have you on board. We'll see you on the other side here. And here we go, everybody. Uh, what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, release the parking brake. Starting pushback. You may start the engine. Okie dokie. Uh, yes, I do use a uh, voice pack. Um, if I can r find the link for it, I will link it for you down below. Um, it's kind of weird to try and find it on, um, I always have a hard time tracking it down. It is from the, uh, the forums, the explain forums on the dot org. Uh, but trying to find it sometimes is really... Uh, difficult. It's kind of weird. Uh, but if I can, I will do it. It's got some regional voices. It doesn't have all places in the world. And uh, I can never get the Afrikaner voices to work, even though I have the voice pack there. Ah, as you can hear, I am on Discord. If you want to know what's been going on and all that and why my voice sounds a little different and all that, watch the previous video uh, in the 777 I explain it. That, or better yet, join the Discord. Ah, uh, we are at 27.5. That means we can go boogie. Absolutely lovely. I, I, I really like this. I... Never flown to Portugal before, I don't think, on the channel. The approach into here was... It was very picturesque. I, I rather enjoyed it. Okay, that's one good start. I would get... The next one... Uh, if you don't want this thing reading the temperature at the tip is like 101 Celsius or something, do not turn these on until both engines are fully started. Twenty-five percent. That's introduced the old fuel. The engines uh, spool up much slower. The f especially the first one. Set parking brake. It is so nice having regional voices. It's connecting to standby. Certainly. And hey, we got a short taxi, so that'll be cool. And we got two good engine starts, and they're pretty much too much. Over. Over. Boom. 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 There we go. 33,000. Get you there. Starters to both. We'll get the engines to continuous in a minute. 
Make sure the odd damper didn't turn off. We'll so get you connected. Try. Yes, bypass pin has been removed. And signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Thank you very much for your service, sir. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. And we could get that off. And uh, everything there is good. RTO, get the auto throttle, VNAV. LNAV won't arm until in the air. Don't like that little switch. Ah, what did I want? I want progress over here. Now let's go to Casablanca. Uh, I know somebody will ask if you don't know how you do this, like get this over here. So, the top of the Avi tab is clickable. So, you pull it over, right? There you go. Now, if you click here, it pops off. And then, just drag it to where you would like it. I'm going to start the clock now. And put it there. Uh, there are a couple of things I would like at some point. By the way, if you think this is like the old Zeebo, like if you're still on one of the earlier versions, boy, are you in for a rude awakening. This aircraft now is so much like the real aircraft. I mean, they've got real Boeing pilots uh, on their team. Uh and all that. They have the actual handbook for the 800 and all that. What was my speed again? My V... Dang. Uh... And it rough. Index. Take off. Stop. 143. Here we go. Whoops. Over. Uh, I will show you a few things uh, how you get your flight plan in the aircraft is full sim brief integration it also has it will uh, be able to automatically grab your in it ref so your weights your balances your cost index your flight altitude your weights balances all of that the airside service loading that you saw uh, on the tablet the ground handling deluxe that's a payware add-on I just use that that is not required the aircraft will still load without it and load the cargo and the passengers and the catering and fuel and everything else like that so don't worry it's just uh, I've owned that since uh, good lord I don't remember when I bought ground handling deluxe years and years ago and it's just that uh, kind of an old staple with some aircraft it also works right out of the box with the 777. You got to do some stuff in the EFP though for the 777. This aircraft, man, I'm telling you. It taxis so well. Now, they have completely um, redone the entire uh, engine uh, model uh, for thrust, the way it behaves, the spool up times, uh, how long it takes the compressor to really get you know, going, we only have 134 passengers, so we're not all that heavy. So we will take off from here. Okay, that's that. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. No, I want you on. It's you I want off. Engines to continuous. The airframe profile 
has been completely revamped. It's a lot more slippery, this aircraft now. Do not be afraid to use this. It is not a lever of shame. Uh, if you ever go in Nico's streams, uh, they're often, not all the time, but sometimes people like Sasso and all that who are real world pilots, uh, they tell you, man, we use the speed brake all the time. It's there for a reason. It's like, uh, you know, and I mean, there's all kinds of pilots that have said that, I, like watching a different content creator streams and such like that and talking to them on discords. They go, look, if we need to use the, the, the speed brake, we use the speed brake. It's as simple as that. Our goal is get that plane down parked up at a gate or a ramp and those engines shut down as quickly as possible. That is the main goal. And to do it in a safe and efficient manner. That saves both time and money. That is our job. So here we go. You'll watch. These will spool up much slower than they used to. Get them up to around 40%. Notice how these are coming up a lot and then they fly back ever slowly. Toga. Everybody's favorite button. I don't have flaps. Dummy. 80 knots. Oh, you did idiot, David. See, this is what happens when you get complacent. You think you know everything. I haven't flown this aircraft B1. B1. in ages. Positive rate. Whoa, does she handle a lot different. Uh, as this is a shakedown flight, I will be getting on the autopilot pretty dang quick. 400. Perfect. We'll go to flaps too, and then we'll leave them out, actually. Uh, because uh, this is a brand new 1, version, I want to see how she handles. Get those off now. Uh, so things I'd like to see added to the aircraft. There you go. Uh, one, it's not a big deal, but I'd love this to be able to be able to dragged up here somewhere. You know, or up over here. Like a bit more freedom as to where you can place it. You can basically move it in the straight line across almost kind of thing. Um... We will go to flaps one. Uh, this aircraft I do have wing views for. Good old Sim Heaven. Oh, we are in 1440p, just uh, so you know, so you know. Uh, if, if uh, you know, your uh, device can do 1440. Although, I, it's amazing, a lot of people watch uh, actually on their consoles. And uh, that, which is uh, really cool. I'm always uh, surprised at how many um, people actually do fly Microsoft Flight Simulator on an Xbox. Maul, longtime subscriber, one of my very first subscribers back in, uh, you know, years ago. He flies on Xbox. Uh, now, granted, back then, of course, we were in the height of everything which did catch up to me and which is why I don't sound exactly the same uh, it did a real number on me oh I forgot to put LNAV on good work sunshine get talking and then I forget everything we can put the cue to there now I will take progress Uh, 
There we go. Boom. Autopilot disconnect. there as long as I can see this this kind of annoys me it blocks out the FMC but you know it is what it is uh, outside right as we make our turn absolutely beautiful approaching the end departure into here really glad I decided to fly into Portugal which I don't think I've ever flown into before I don't usually fly Europe, but now we're going to Africa, which I do fly quite often. Not as much as Asia and the Middle East, and uh, Eurasia and that, but I do like flying in Africa. Especially uh, in Zambia, Mozambique, Algeria, Libya, Syria, Morocco. And, of course, you know, Kenya. Like, uh, if, if you've not flown the African continent, don't sleep on it. It is freaking gorgeous. Especially you get the ortho going. Or if you're a Microsoft Flight Simulator, you know, like, it's, uh, it's so diverse. The terrain and landscape changes constantly it's amazing so some things you need to know to get this to come up on here I'll take us back here you go to the Abbey tab you go to the roots page and you want to load your route now this is a two-part process here let me get up the old handy dandy sim brief downloader so some things have obviously changed you will now see there are there is a specific entry for the Zebo. So to get this on here and have it show up, you download the flight plan like normal. Okay? And it will be in dot PLN mode. To get this to be able to load up, like your flight plan, your init ref, and all that, you need to download this file as well. Now, you're going to say, David, it goes into the same place. That is true, but this is not a .pln. This is a .xml file. And this is what the FMC and the Zebo reads and uses uh, for the flight parameters, for the weights, the balances, the fuel loads, uh, cargo load, uh, flight altitude, uh, power profile, all that stuff. It's all in here. Read the install guide, read the manual. This is not a just, it's like, how complicated can it be? It's a 737. You know, you, 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 once you got the APU going, just like push back, you know, spool the engines and away you go. Yeah, you're going to have a very bad time. Um, because if you do stupid stuff, this thing is going to mess you up. And so there's our route. So there it is. And then we go to map. And it will be loaded. And this is just the default X-Plane background. So how you get that. Use X-Plane Earth Textures map. That's all. Oops. Click here. It'll follow your aircraft. And everything like that. I wish you could make this dark. So it's black background. I don't like light. Thing. but that is how you do that that is how you get that over so what we're going to do going to give you a little outside view there on the wing um, as most of this flight will be over like you know the Strait of Gibraltar and all that uh, I am simply going to uh, keep flying I record for my own purposes but I'll edit all that out I'll bring you back uh, when we begin our top of descent 
uh, of our flight into Casablanca. I want to thank you for flying along with me. Don't forget, like, share, you know, the whole YouTube thing. Click show more links in the description to my Discord, how you can support the channel. A lot of the add-ons and, and uh, such that I am using will be listed down there below as well and where you can get them. Pay where it's in use today. Ground Handling Deluxe, which you saw when we were on the ramp and X and Viro. Other than that, everything else is completely freeware, including this magnificent aircraft, this livery. I will hook you up with the livery for this aircraft if you would like it for yourself. Just realize it is an X-Plane 11 livery, so it's not going to have all the fancy effects in X-Plane 12. If you want X-Plane 12 specific liveries, you're going to have to go to the xplane.co uh, and get them from there. Um, but there's not as many. Um, because these ones work. So, I'm glad to have you on board. We'll see you on the other side when we start it again. Thanks for flying along with me. And welcome back, everyone. We are about four nautical miles from top of drop. There we are. I've already put in all my numbers and everything else like that uh, for the VREF, uh, for the barrel minimums. It's actually around 636 feet, but uh, I just rounded up to 650. Seatbelts can stay off for now. When we get around 20,000, we'll turn them on. And, uh... I didn't really bring it back mid-flight at all, uh, because in all honesty, the, the aircraft just performed uh, perfectly. The entire way, the whole flight. As long as I wasn't interfering with anything. Um, it just, uh, look at those clouds. Multiple like the way they stack through the altitude the different shape this is the power and the beauty of X Enviro it overwrites the shading the texture mapping uh, it creates its own clouds everything whereas Active Sky simply inputs what the weather conditions are barometric pressure dew points you know uh, some of the atmospherics and that but it uses default X-Plane 12's weather to depict all that. Um, last I checked, it doesn't have its own uh, thing, whereas X-Enviro is a complete environmental package. Skybox, texturing, night sky, um, like the whole nine yards. Um, now, I, this is not sponsored in any way, um, but uh, Magnus from Threshold uh, did give me a code for X and Viro, so I want to put that out there in full disclosure. It's not sponsored in any way. I wasn't told I have to make content using it. I use it because I like it. I am on a beta build. Um, if you want it, um, you need to be in the Threshold Discord or the X Enviro Discord. It does not appear on the website. Uh, one of the downsides of it, if I can pull it over, uh, we have all these uh, debug windows and developer panels and that, so, but they're easy enough, you just hide them. Because uh, technically X Enviro is still only supporting the full version, so 12.09. As 12.1 is still in flux, it's not finished and complete, or 12.2. Um, X Enviro does not support betas. Uh, but because of uh, issues that came up, you can read about that. I'm not going to go into it here. 
Uh, you can read about that in the uh, X Enviro uh, Discord. Um, development got uh, sidelined for a while. And he knew that, you know, was it 1.33? Was having issues with um, the updated uh, way uh, things are depicted in X Plane 12 and the way they started modifying some of the weather engine parameters and such. Or the way weather has to be projected, if you will. And it was causing issues. If you had a really low ceiling, literally you would see the clouds going across the ground level. Even though there was no fog reported at the airport, it was like it was having troubles uh, with interpreting altitude and such like that or something. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, you know, a developer. Uh, so they cobbled together this. And it does work as you see in the last uh, two videos now. Uh, it works perfectly fine. You just got to drag down these, close the log uh, window and just drag them and hide them. Put them on another screen, put them down the bottom. If I hadn't have pulled that out, you wouldn't have even known what that was. So it's not like it's a true. Uh, it's just, you know, you have to do it because when you um, load up, in the sim and you get into the aircraft you'll have like three windows that fill the screen with debug logs uh, recording filters log file developer panel kind of thing so other than that I mean it's it's just it, look it's coming down nicely we a little over speed uh, probably but here's the thing I'm more worried about right now. We're on profile. Could I whack out the speed break? I could if I was up at like 290 or 280. But being off by about 9. You know, 10 knots. Not too concerned. It does. We'll use auto brake 3. I'll use uh, reversers but at idle thrust. Um, and that should uh, be more than enough to get us stopped. Uh, well, I'm flying, so who knows? Uh, and now we will get this on. <coughs> I don't really need that anymore. Uh, uh, that's not what I want. Uh, I have to open the door, then you could hear it. We'll be touching down in less than 30 minutes, so do make your way back to your seats. Thanks for choosing to fly the state, and it's been a pleasure having you on board. Okay. Okay, now we are getting a little quick, so I will put it into flight detent, even though we're on profile. Uh, this aircraft is a lot more slippery right now, and this is not the longest approach once I make the final turn. So it's not going to have a lot of time to lose speed. Um, she's a slippery one now. Um, it does not like to give up uh, speed. Uh, it's a bird. She wants to keep flying. She does not want to slow down and come down. Well, she doesn't mind coming down, but she doesn't want to slow down. Put it that way. Outside.
not a sunset approach, which I uh, or a sunrise approach, which I always love doing into here. But regardless, it is still beautiful. I love flying the African continent. Had an issue with the ah uh, ah uh, the or the, I'm recording this at like four in the morning um, with the ortho loading. I think I messed something up in my scenery I and I. So it said it would not be used. So this is just um, sim heaven, which, as you can see, if you don't want to get into the whole ortho thing. Adding sim heaven so you get more representative housing types and buildings and such like that. That's perfectly viable. And that's safe, you know, because, look, not everybody has unlimited bandwidth. Okay? Or high-speed internet. That they can, you know, be, you know, tying up all the time. Uh, to be downloading ortho tiles on the fly. That's all good, that's all good. <coughs> Oh, you can hear them engines sort of spooling around a little bit. It's really cool. As you see, it's slowing down nicely. It's maintained. No shimmying, shaking, no porpoising. Nothing. Like, this aircraft has come so far. I haven't flown this in like three months. Uh, I took a hiatus and um, literally walked away about what June end of June and just uh, basically just I'm burned out I closed the channel down and uh, just had to get back uh, into the mindset if you will now, will you slow for the 250? Or are you going to shoot through? Yeah, no, it's coming down. And I'm giving it a hand. I think it started to slow down and spool back a little late, I'll be honest. But we will give it a hand. There we go. I should have put those there earlier. My bad. And the entire time we have been on profile. Like, I, I it, it's just it. It just flies so well. It, it's it's uh, that how far this aircraft has come. Just in X Plane 12 alone, and by the way, a lot of the things I'm showing you are not available in X Plane 11 version. Not saying the X Plane 11 version is dead, but it's not really under uh, it's not under active development. Um, unless something pops up that's an absolute you know, sim-breaking bug. If a laminar was to change X-Plane 11 in some fundamental way. Um, X-Plane 11 development is dormant. 
uh, at this time. The focus is X-Plane 12. So don't be expecting airside services and all that kind of stuff that I was showing you to be in the X-Plane 11 version because he's, the team is not even looking at X-Plane 11 stuff uh, at all. Like I said, unless, you know, Laminar changes something fundamentally in X-Plane 11 that breaks the Zebo, in which case, you know, obviously then, you know, the team would look at it. And it is a team, you know, that that works on it. You've got Twixter, Twixter and you've got um, Mr. Zebo himself. You've got others that are you know, have real-world knowledge and such that are working with them. Of course, Nico, the primary tester of everything with uh, Skymatics. So it's a group effort. And unlike some, uh, you know, developers and modders and that, they take on board, so, you know, stuff the community says. Which is really cool. It doesn't mean it's going to get done. But, I mean, they're willing to listen to it. Uh, which is more than I can say for some. Some developers, you know, it's like, look, you don't know what you want. I know what you want. Don't you tell me. It's like, you know, that that's the kind of attitude they have when customers... Uh, you know, or simmers, you know, make suggestions. It's like they get treated like they don't know what they're talking about. You don't know what's you don't know what's good for you. You don't know what you want. I do, and it's like that's just like so freaking arrogant. It's unreal. Now we're slowing down, and you should be able to click here. Okay. Doesn't want to. Uh, we'll wait. Might have something to do with speed. And here we go. And it obviously is going to cut the corner off slightly. And I left both sides. DME is alive. Localizer alive and active. Get one in. Like I said, it's not a brutally long approach. And then I'm going to go straight to flaps 5. If you notice, the flaps extend much slower now. In a lot of ways. Doesn't look bad without the ortho. Unless it's cached somehow. But I think it looks good. I like it. I do love flying into here. I can't, I'm not gonna lie. And where are we? Localizer approach. Well, there we go. 166. What was my VRAV? 136. Pops oh. dead. Still 9.1 miles out, so that's good. 
That's some Claude. Um, as is a shakedown, do I want to see if it can do an auto land? Got no real wins. Twenty five hundred. Confirmed. Nope, still one dot one zero one seven, so that's good. What, 15 gear coming down? Well, looks like they might get a storm, evening storm today. Oh, what a profile, man. Up to 25. Now I'll get you back to continuous. Get the APU warming up. Uh-huh. Deep break arm. Pop 30. Fully configured. Oh, we do have a bit of a crosswind. 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Perch altitude set. Confirmed. Come here. My aircraft. Get some rudder in there. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Approaching minimums. Oh. 200. Boy, I tell you, crosswinds are factor, man. They really worked on the flight model. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Not my greatest, that's for sure. Reversers are green. Just using idle. 80 knots. 80 knots. Manual braking. Reversers still. <laughs> ah! Over 90% of our flights arrived on Ryan, yeah, well, did that say Ryanair? I can't hear. I got my headset on. But if it did, yeah, that was a Ryan. Actually, so it's funny. Ryanair has such a bad rap. When in reality, I have seen them make some incredible landings. Clean up the aircraft.
get you to traffic only, and here we go. There goes the APU. Awesome. Um, we'll just park over here somewhere. Uh, boy, did they ever change the flight model. You really could feel that. Because I am pretty light. I don't have a lot of weight on board. That, that 10 knot crosswind, I felt that, man. Let me tell you. Uh, where do we want to park? Is that a parking spot up there, by chance? Uh, no. Okay. Ah, uh, so, well done, Nico and the team. That is the first time where it's like, wow, like, like it just caught me completely off guard. And I could really tell, it's like, okay, it's a 10 knot wind, it's not, but it was a direct crosswind I don't have a um, I'm not really carrying I'm just carrying luggage there's no actual cargo uh, on this flight so no extra weight over and above what the passengers brought on board and the food and all that and on top of that not a lot of fuel it's a short flight it's you know 134 passengers there's a uh, it's just a light aircraft uh, no, it's not a parking spot. That's a blast wall. In case an aircraft is pushed back in backwards. Um, I really felt that. This is what happens when you have a drop parked aircraft. Then you can't find a place to freaking park. Half the time. It's annoying. If you want to save yourself 10 frames a second or so, if you're struggling, turn all these off. Yes, it makes the airport look dead and empty. I understand that. But, like, if you're not going to get a new CPU or more RAM or better video card with more VRAM or whatever, uh, those are the options you have left. You have to start turning stuff off. You know? Um, 32 gigs of system RAM is the new 16. In my humble opinion. And... A video card, uh, my humble opinion, 12 megabytes is the, a or gigabytes is the absolute minimum. And you should have 16, in all honesty. The days of, in my humble like I mean, if you want to have any kind of eye candy and such, you guys are all just parked. Look, this is weird parking alignment. What's supposed to pop in here? A Cessna? Well, I'm just going to park here. Heck with that. Uh, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this flight, uh, everyone. Uh, what do I want? Uh, you. Get the parking brake on here. There we go. That's available. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, you know, ring the bell, all that kind of stuff. Um, links to everything I used will be down in the description below. Uh, including where you can get delivery, Action Viro, the Zebo mod, uh, ground handling deluxe, uh, and all of that. And uh, the Zebo performed perfectly fine. The new engine and flight model, the engines, I could feel the weight. They did take a little bit of time to either spool down or spool up when I was on final, when I took full control of the aircraft. Always the most uh, biggest mistake that I ever make when I do a flight, I take control. Um, I really felt the changes to the flight and engine model. I felt that 10 knot crosswind. I felt this plane was really light. 
um, and that which is like that's what you want um, that that was beautiful good work Nico and the team anyways like I said links to everything down below as well as my discord how you can support the channel until the next time folks my name is David it's been my pleasure to take you on this short flight and shakedown of the brand new Zebo mod if you like uh, your, you know, passenger ops and, uh, you know, 737s, you ain't going to do much better than, uh, actually, I don't think you can do any better than the Zebo mod. I'll put it up against the PMDG 737 any day, week, month, day of the year. Um, it, it, it's a beauty, and it's completely freeware. It ain't going to cost you, you no know, 90 bucks. Um, and it's updated and in developed constantly. Until the next time, folks, I want you to stay safe, be kind to one another, keep the blue side up. And I will see you in the skies, on the rail, or on the roads. Maybe we do some amphib action up next. Or some trucking or trains, you never know. Hit the bell, get notified when my videos go live, so you'll know which one I decide on. Take care, everyone. Have yourself a great week. Take care. God bless.